Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at the first two issues of Evan Salazar's one man anthology Rodeo. Thank you to Alex Nall and the interview that we did together for pointing out Evan Salazar's work and recommending it to me. Really enjoyed these first two issues. I'm starting to get a sense of where the main story in these is heading, what this is kind of heading towards, I think. But it's, I feel like maybe two more issues I'll really, really know what this work is headed towards exactly, but uh, I think by the end of issue two, I'm starting to get, get a pretty good sense. So it seems like the main story that Evan Salazar is using Rodeo to tell is called a Knox Family Tree story. This one is medium brew, and you're following this main character, Abigail Knox, as she learns stuff about her family. In this first episode, I don't even think you get the character's name, you just start to get an introduction to the main character and her family. You're getting the sense that parental issues in the family, her parents leading to a divorce, is causing some sort of distress to the main character. And she might be developing a dissociative disorder or so, some, some kind of disorder to deal with her parents. Um, having problems in their relationship. You can see here on this page there's some really great cartooning. Like I especially like the way the dad's hair is drawn and everything. And I really like the shout out here to Schultz as well. Even though this moves a little bit away from Salazar's natural style, I really like that bit of Schultz cartooning there. And seeing how that is influencing what seems to be Salazar's main approach to making art. Then you get a second story in here that's just a guy named Rodolfo working at a night shift. Real quick little story just about working. You get the sense that maybe this is a character that's either going to get his own story off to the side or is going to play a bigger part in the Knox family tree story as you go. That's why I'm saying I'm not quite sure because this is a one-man anthology if some of these things are just Evan Salazar like doing this is just a short comic idea he has and he's just getting that out or if this is part of a bigger tapestry since that seems to be something that's in the air in the self-published world lately or at least the stuff that i'm running into where people are building larger stories out of smaller self-contained stories that might be what's going on here like here you have a story called maggie and it's really just like a six panel story about a cat and so you kind of wonder like where that's that's headed but that's the first issue. Just a quick peek into the characters and you know where everything's starting from. In Rodeo 2, you get a better look. Well, actually on the back here, you get another like little uh, critters here. But in issue 2, you get a larger sense, especially of this Knox family tree storyline developing. You find out really early on that the lead character is taking on this alter ego, Judy Juniper, and is envisioning her as something between an alter ego and an imaginary friend. As the story develops, you start to get the sense that maybe this is more of like a dissociative disorder um, that the character has developed this. So in this one, you get the main character's name is Abby Knox. She has developed this uh, Judy Juniper I think in the first issue they mentioned a book, um, but it's mentioned here again that there's this book that she's reading, A Theory of Autonoetic Consciousness. As f I didn't look it up, but I'm pretty sure noetic is dream related. I could get that wrong, but kind of an auto dream state, like checking out, I think is what they're talking about. And they're talking about the genetic history of this as well as you know how how life situation can impact that you get a couple different short stories in here that are all like related to that same narrative but they have they're they're like chapters but they can function as their own stories you get again here um abby looking at this this book that seems really important to her and she starts chasing down the name of a, a certain woman that she's interested in she finds a picture in here and you see that this is referring to her having read this book when she was younger in issue one and she had left a picture there and now she's kind of getting into this conspiratorial mindset i i believe in coincidence like two days different people thought i were two different people 
or when I found out that my parents' new dog had the same birthday as me. So you start to get a sense that maybe there's like a schizophrenia, some kind of paranoid mind state that she's entering into. Obviously now in issue one, she was a child. Here she is grown up. You see she's starting to do some uh, research into this character that she thinks may be a relative of hers. That's where you get the family tree coming in. And she's talking about I, I, that she's feeling like she knew this character. She's seen in this book that she's reading a photograph of a image that she remembers seeing in a relative's house. Um, so she's feeling like mixed up between this character she's working and herself. Uh, also, you see that she's being referred to as Miss Juniper in either this imagining or this real world situation. So the story starts to get a little mixed up in that way and that seems pretty intentional. You're also um, introduced to her uncle who her, she's got all these questions that she's been asking about her family and she keeps getting referred to an uncle of hers that she really hasn't had any contact with in a long time. But she finally comes to the point where she gets over her embarrassment and contacts him and starts asking about this photograph and you see that the the photograph that she's looking at is very likely uh, something that's being seen out of his window or something that he does have access to she goes she goes over there and gets to know more about the family history from him and gets gets over that uh, uh, barrier in their relationship starts to get to know her uncle and get some of her questions answered there's also a really cool sequence where you get like Abby having drawn uh, a Judy Juniper in the missing picture. So you, that is related to this, where she's talking about this picture with her uncle and she's, this is her doing her own cartooning. And I really, really think this is impressive that Evan Salazar has been able to draw in such a childlike style. I think a lot of artists actually have a hard time getting that look right. And Evan Salazar nailed it perfectly. And then here, there's some more evidence of like a dissociative disorder or something developing in Abigail and Judy Juniper says we can be, we can only be in the picture or in real life, not both. I don't know what to pick. So she's having some kind of desire to move into this state before things went wrong with her family or potentially that she was dissociating into the picture during moments when fights were going on with her family or something like that. That's the sense I get of, of what's going on in here, but it's not 100% clear yet because we're only two issues in. And then you have what I think is also pretty cool where the character has like an emotional memory. Um, it's not having a real pictorial memory but she's referencing a mood that was described when the parents would argue in issue one saying, uh, I fell asleep and dreamt of a small island obscured by fog. That's a feeling that she describes in the first issue about like, oh, it feels like a small island obscured by fog, re referring to how she felt at the time. So I think that's a really interesting idea that someone's not remembering a picture or something particular, but is remembering an emotion or a mood that they had experienced. So there's just a lot of real depth, observational depth about humanity, a uh, really kind of cool structure here where there's these different pieces and the, you're kind of going through the mystery with the character. Really enjoy it, really hooked into it. I think that is a, a very cool structure. Then here at the end, you get another like short story this one is about a, um, a someone getting a digital camera and filming movies and getting kicked out for that. So that seems like pretty self-contained, but again, you, you don't know. And then a nice little illustration, uh, letters page and illustration on the back. So really enjoy this, really hooked into the story. Not exactly sure 100% how to assess it yet because I don't think it's far enough along. But my other than to say that it's so far it's going really great and I'm hooked and, and I want to know more. So everyone definitely do yourself a favor. Run out and grab these issues of Rodeo before they're out. These are self-published things. They don't have, a, a, you know, how, how many there are in, a, in addition on this. But I'm assuming this isn't something that will be around for a huge amount of time. This is the second printing. So at least Evan's reprinting it. But it also seems like with the size difference, 
the reprints are probably going to be smaller. I, I don't know, but I'm assuming the first printing was larger like this. Because uh, other than that, maybe it's just, you know, as his audience grows, he can go bigger. But there's obviously a size discrepancy, so I'm not sure. Anyways, really good material, really compelling. I think this is going to go on to be one of those things that a lot of people follow for a lot of years. And then, like, you know, five years, ten years from now, someone's going to collect the Knox family tree story. And it's going to be a big deal. Finally, we can all get it. So get it now and follow it while it goes. I think it will really be worth it. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to uh, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's an absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up.